So how the how did the documentary come about? Yes. Mm -hmm. So I was um, I was really interested in in domino artists on you, particularly on YouTube. I was sort of you know really fascinated by that world and that subculture, and I found myself going down YouTube rabbit holes of just watching hours and hours of of domino videos. And I quickly soon discovered that mm -hmm. like everything leads to Lily, um, and I, it was, it was right after I finished another movie that was at South by called The World Before Your Feet, which was a really, really difficult um, editing movie. And I was just kind of like trying to just, you know, relax almost and watch all those, you know, domino videos. And um, I just became really fascinated by Lily and by her story and first just as a fan. So it was sort of the first time in my life where I was like looking as a fan at, at somebody um, and thinking about, could this be a, a documentary? And um, after meeting with Lily and talking with her and getting to know her and getting to hear more about her own story, um, I really thought that it could be a movie that could resonate with like a lot of people in different ways. And um, that's kind of like how it all came about. And, and um, yeah, it, it, we filmed for three years, so it was it really coincided with a lot of great stuff that was happening in her life. And also, I wanted to ask about your directorial approach for this film as well, and what that experience was like and once the project got up and started, just your approach to directing the film as well. Are you talking specifically the story aspect of it or the, uh, the, the approach of the movie? Um, you yeah, kind of like balancing your approach to creating the story for it that you wanted to include in the film, as well as maybe any technical aspects of the sure, directing. Sure. So I, I, you know, I immediately, I, I was drawn to Lily first, like thinking like, okay, this could be like a great portrait of an artist, right? You know, here's this young YouTuber, you know, which is something that's all kind of mystifying, like what? Mm -hmm. YouTube and, you know, she is, for lack of a better description, she is a YouTube star. You know, she has 3 million followers and her videos have been seen a billion times. So I was attracted first as this like, wow, this is a really interesting portrait of a Gen Z YouTube artist, right? However, very quickly, I realized that no, what was so fascinating here was that this was a coming of age story and that there was these elements that sort of stuck out to me that were more like a coming of age movie, more like a coming, you know, telling the story of this sort of young woman who, who kind of finds herself. Um, and yeah, she's having a phenomenal success and she's, you know, people are discovering her on YouTube, but yet she's sort of finding her own mojo a little bit. And that was something that uh, that was really what the story that I, I most resonated with me and what I said, okay, well, I get it. That's, that's what the movie should be. Um, this story that it's a portrait of an artist, but it's really kind of cloaked, you know, and that it's in some ways very much a, a coming of age story. Also, I wanted to ask about what kind of research you might have done into Lily's life overall um, before making the film and what that experience was like of really getting to know her better um, during the production as well. So there was a, um, a lengthy, you know, kind of pre-production where I was kind of doing, looking at everything I could about Lily, but then it really started to click for me when I, when I met her and um, getting to spend time with her and just say casually, just saying casually, look, you know, could what do you think? You know, I, I'd love to collaborate with you. And approaching Lily, you know, Lily is a great filmmaker. She's on, she does, has incredible stuff. And she doesn't need me just to kind of come in, in and say, okay, let's make a documentary on you. But rather, how can we do this where I could tell a story that maybe your YouTube fans and the people that you you create your content for don't get to see this story. And once I got to know her better and I spent time with her, I said, yeah, this is really something where we where I, I'd love just to kind of hover behind you. And um, I did that for nearly three years, um, starting with her in college. I mean, I remember when we first started, I said, hey, I'm going to show up at, at, at your <laughs> dorm. You know, and it was something where she had not really, she wasn't even ready for that in a way because she had been used to these very kind of superficial profiles and people just looking at her like, oh, you're a YouTube star. Oh, 3 million followers, let, let, let's do a profile. 
Where, and I was next thing you know, like spending mm -hmm. a week at her college with her. So mm -hmm. it was a, a different experience for her. And I think it really resulted in, in something qu quite interesting. And also I wanted to ask about including um, people in the film as well, besides Lily, who really talk about her and what that process was like of securing those interviews and really figuring out what you wanted to discuss with people who know her and know about her as well as her own. Sometimes I try to resist, you know, the sit down interview in documentaries, you know, I just sometimes prefer like, hey, let's, let's, can, how much can we do in a documentary without sit down interviews, right? However, just as you point out, there were great people in her world that really had great things to say about her. And um, one thing, you know, we haven't mentioned is that Lily was a, a Chinese adoptee. So she was adopted from China when she was one. And she grew up in New Hampshire where she was the only Asian American in, in, her, in her high school and her elementary school. And um, that, you know, that was something that I thought was just really interesting for her, her background. And I, you know, she was developing all these friends in college and they had their own take of her because she's so unassuming and she's so humble and she doesn't yell out to everybody how she's this sort of YouTube celebrity. And they, half of, of her college friends didn't even really know. They just kind of heard rumors that she was big on YouTube, but they didn't even really know if it was that girl, you know, they're like, what, if mm -hmm. it's her? So that was something that I was really interested in as part of this story. And it became, just to get to your question, it became a reason to say like, okay, well, let's let's look at some of these people in her life to, to, to color in this story. And um, I did a, did a fair amount of, of really interesting sit down interviews with her friends in college, with her parents who adopted her out of China, and with a lot of the people in her world, other domino artists, mostly who are boys, right? Lily's also the only girl in this community and she's the most successful by far. So that was also something that I wanted to sort of show in the movie in that way and uh, knew that there was a, a number of people that I'd wanted to interview to kind of tell this story in that way. Also, I wanted to ask about um, also working as one of the cinematographers on the film and what that process was like of figuring out how you wanted to visually shoot the film as well. So that, that was a big question for me. Like, how do we film this? You know, because I knew that, you know, in the film, for example, there's probably 20, 25 um, domino artworks in the film and um, that are featured in the film. And I knew that I wanted to film them you know, in a way that really kind of put an audience right there, you know, right there next to Lily, right in with the dominoes. Well, that's all, that's all sounds nice. But then when you're suddenly in a space where they're building for hours and hours, and there's thousands, literally thousands of dominoes everywhere, and any wire or any tripod or any accidental step can knock over, you know, a day's work for, for Lily and her team. It was incredibly, incredibly stressful. And I remember thinking like, oh, this will be fun filming dominoes. Mm -hmm. This is gonna be a blast. And in, instead it was always, always super mm -hmm. stressful. Um, and it had to do with like saying like, okay, I really want to put the camera really close to you when you're building. I want to get right in there next to you. I want to film it with all these different cameras. So having that very immersive approach proved to be incredibly difficult. The other thing that was very important to me was showing the process. So many of the domino artists, especially on YouTube, it's about the topple, right? You know, the topple is awesome. We all love the topple. <laughs> but for me, it was so interesting to also be able to watch Lily at work, you know, creating these things and designing them and sort of imagining them out of her head, you know? So that was something that I really wanted to show. And it, again, it forced me to kind of be right next to her. And there were many times, many, where I would be on a shoot with Lily and I would just kind of see her look over at me and just, you know, <laughs> ner nervous that I was going to knock over the dominoes. Through the three years, I knocked over dominoes one time and it was a bad, it was a bad knockover, but it was the only time mm -hmm. was, was one time where it happened. So I wanted to ask about editing the film as well and what that process was like of really putting the final version of the story together in the film. Very difficult. Um, you know, I, I, I really, um, um, I, 
editing is very you know important to me and these these kinds of movies as i said a coming of age movie a portrait of an artist you know it's so much built in the editing you know and it's not there's no competition people say, have asked me like oh so is there a domino competition we watch no they don't, they don't have that so it became about how do we tell this story how do we how do we tell the story where maybe viewers might be coming to it thinking oh, this is some, you know, something for kids. And then over the course of the movie, it becomes maybe a little deeper, a little bit more emotional. Um, and that was something that I was thinking about quite a bit in the editing. Um, I think we probably shot 500 hours. It could have been more because there were so many times where I had multiple cameras. I mean, there were times when I had five, six cameras shooting a, a domino piece. And yet I also wanted to make sure that the movie had this real sense of um, int intimacy, that we were always there with, with her. Um, so it became a real balancing act with the editing and um, it took, took forever, you know, mm -hmm. definitely took forever, but I feel really good about how it came out. And also I wanted to ask about producing the film as well and what that experience was like of balancing the producing with the directing as well. Yeah, it was definitely tricky to produce the film. I was doing a lot on this, you know. I had had experience of kind of covering wearing many hats from my previous films. You know, I had had this uh, movie that was out South by, you know, in 2018, The World Before Your Feet. And um, then it got subsequently was released and had a great release. And, and that was the first film where I had also worn a lot of hats. And, you know, sometimes it's it's fun just to be like, okay, well now I'm gonna go, I'm, now I'm gonna be a cinematographer and I'm not gonna worry how much I shoot. And, oh, that editor who has gonna have to edit this, oh, he's gonna have a, what a nightmare it's gonna be for him. And then, you know, a couple of weeks later, now I'm the editor and I'm looking at all this footage and I'm cursing out the cinematographer <laughs> for not getting the right stuff. So it was just a, a real process. Um, it was great to kind of be able to produce it. I would I would constantly, you know, be be back and forth with Lily, and and she was such a collaborator as much of a subject, where she would also have great suggestions. Hey, I'm going to be doing this thing with Casey Neistat. Let's figure out a way to to make it part of the movie. Or I'm going to go out to L.A. and I'm going to VidCon, and we would sort of figure out ways how we can make that part of the movie. So it was um, it was a whole sort of effort to kind of figure that out, and she helped uh, immensely for that. Also, speaking about South by, I also wanted to ask about that experience of bringing this film in particular, and with the virtual screening in particular, and what that experience has been like of gearing up for the festival as well. So far, it's been great. You know, I mean, ever you know, I, we go on these like Zooms and orientation meetings and mm -hmm. meetups and virtual meetups, and everybody's like, "Oh, you know, it's a virtual. Too bad we're not all in Austin." And like, I know that's awesome because I've done it. It's incredible to be in Austin and to play at the Draft House, and I have, you know, it's incredible. It's amazing. Um, that said, you know, the vir the the virtual festival seems to be just going great. I mean, there's so many things going on. There's so many ways to interact. Um, and also, I think ultimately more people might see the movie. So it, in some ways, you know, when you're in on the ground at a festival, there's everybody's like kind of looking and you can't make it to screenings and you got your, there's conflicts, you know, but now with the virtual, like everybody's invited and, you know, everybody could check out Lily Topples the World. And, and I, I think that it, it, it kind of raises some great opportunities that we'll see how it goes from here. But, you know, I don't feel like it's a missed opportunity at all. I feel like this is really exciting how, how they're doing it. I think that was me, Lee, but thank you again for taking the time out today. I appreciate it. No problem. My pleasure. Mm -hmm. Thanks again.